Hello, everyone, and welcome to the virtual program at the Commonwealth Club. My name is Denise Michaud, Chair of the Grown Ups Forum, and we have a great program for you tonight. The program is called Transitions and Transformations, The Wonderful Journey of Midlife Women. And we are so happy to have Dr. Barbara Mark here to talk with us about these issues. And let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, Barbara is a recognized expert on the stages of adult development and how these stages impact career development and leadership in women. She is a sought after coach by women who are looking to make personal and professional decisions at critical stages in their lives. She is a recipient of the Outstanding Contributions to Advancement of Coaching Award in 2017. And last year she was named Bay Area Powerful Woman. She is a frequent keynote speaker and we want to welcome Barbara to our program. Uh, the program will be about an hour. So towards the end, we'll have a Q and A pro, um, portion. So don't forget to put your questions for Barbara in the uh, YouTube chat room. So Barbara, I'm going to give you the floor, give you the whole screen, and then just let me know when you're ready for uh, questions from the audience. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And, and thanks for welcoming me to the Commonwealth Club. I'm delighted to be back here again. Um, so I'm going to start with a poem by Mary Oliver called The Journey. It is a poem of transformation and speaks of the moment when you dare to listen to your own truth and set sail to a new life, which is really what the journey through midlife is about. So the journey. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles, mend my life, each voice cried. But you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do, though the wind cried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations with their melancholy was terrible. It was already late enough and a wild night and the road full of fallen branches and stones but little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds and there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own. That kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Mary Oliver. Midlife, the middle third of our lives, is an incredible and wonderful time in our lives. And there's a lot going on in our 40s, 50s, and 60s. These are the most dynamic decades in a professional woman's life. And there are so many inflection points, so many choices and decisions that we have to make. And right now we're experiencing a time of a lot of discussion around positive aging, powerful aging. Um, there are many women talking about the power that midlife women have and are, they're confronting ageism um, that still exists in our culture. Of course, men and women are impacted by this ageism and our youth obsessed culture, but my focus is on the lives of women. So I wanna talk a bit about the stages of adult development and how these stages interact with and impact our lives and our career development. I am going to focus primarily on the middle stage, which is when we face the most dynamic and complicated moments of transition. And I'll talk about how to move through these transitions successfully with some comfort and ease. So much of my understanding about midlife is informed by psychoanalyst Carl Jung and the words of those who were inspired by his way of looking at adult life. Jung's belief was that the midlife crisis is in fact a spiritual crisis, not in a religious sense, but in an intrapersonal sense, a profound inflection point in one's life, a time of entering into a deep dialogue with the self about who we have been who, you, who we are becoming, and what it means to have a meaningful and fulfilling life. 
And now that we are living longer and healthier lives, this midlife period can last a very long and exciting time if we approach it with an open mind and an open heart. And because our culture is one that is obsessed with youth, as midlife women, we are compelled to have an active appreciation for all that we are and embrace ourselves with self-compassion and live our lives with self-determination. Let's take a look at these developmental stages. I'm gonna go through all five of them, but again, the, the middle stage is gonna be the one that I'm gonna focus on the most. And so as described by Jung and other, others in the field of adult development, Jung named five primary stages in midlife. And to make things even more confusing, the journey through these stages is often non-linear with overlaps, U-turns and switchbacks along the way. Many aspects of the journey are reminiscent of the hormone driven adolescence that we all remember and is therefore referred to as middle essence. This is a term that was first made popular by Gail Sheehy in her 1976 landmark book, Passages. Essentially, it's an adolescence with the benefit of life experience and acquired wisdom. There are a lot of highs and lows along the way. So having some guideposts helps. The first stage, accommodation, overlaps with our late 30s. As a young adult, we tend to struggle to find the balance between looking to mentors and peers for guidance and examples and our own instincts and sense of self. These are feelings that women struggle with and may continue throughout all of our lives and career while we are working on defining our successes and navigating our life journey. As we climb our life and career ladder to that success, at the accommodation stage, we tend to define and compare our progress by both the expectations and the perceived accomplishments of others. It is a habit of comparing ourselves to what we see as the professional success and the life happiness of others. And that can be the bane of our existence as women, as we seem to fall prey to it throughout our lives. I recommend against it. The next stage is separation. It is in this period of the midlife journey that we begin to distance ourselves from others seem to want us to be and begin to reject the accommodated self. This can manifest as a bit of acting out or at least the impulse to do so. You remember that time wanting to become the boss of me during your adolescence? And not everyone experiences as what they would consider to be a crisis but it can be a bit of a challenge as we try to turn our attention from what others want us to be and do to what we want to be and do as we become the authority and the authors of our lives. And this isn't always a smooth transition. It can be characterized by some of the bratty and tormented feelings that adolescents experience when they're trying on their versions of independence. It is definitely a more a move toward authenticity and all that can mean on so many levels. The next stage in our journey is where I want to focus a lot of my attention this evening. Uh, I find this stage very interesting and very exciting. My clients find that a little frustrating because it's not the most comfortable time for all of my clients. This is the stage of liminality or being at a threshold, a time of transition. It can be an uncomfortable or unsettling time. It also can be a time of great spaciousness and exploration. To me, this and the next stage can be the most interesting stages of the midlife journey. And this is when most of the women I work with seek coaching. During this time, we may feel restless and without direction. A little like being that blindfolded kid playing the party game of pin the tail of the donkey, if you remember that. We may experience portals, passageways, chapter breaks, or chapter endings. It is a time when we may experience transitions like leaving a job, getting a new job, starting a new friendship, or maybe relocating to a different place. However, many of these transitions involve loss. Some of the losses are the ones that we will initiate and others are the ones that we will endure. Losing a parent may happen during this time. We may experience the loss of a spouse through death or divorce. 
This is the time when we tend to reevaluate our friendships and maybe move on from some or have the experience of loss because some friendships will move on from us. And for those of us with children, this is likely the time when we experience an empty nest. These parts of our lives are core to who we are and it can thrust us into a loss of our very identity. This is a time to reach out to others for friendship, for companionship, for support, and maybe go to a counselor or coach or clergy or other source of spiritual solace. We need support born of deep listening and just being in the company of someone. We must engage in profound self-care and self-compassion and listen to our own inner voice that moves us forward and to engage our curiosity to explore what is next and to push through, seek through sometimes dark places to a new place, a brighter place. Grief has its own timeline, its own non-linear path, and we deserve the kindest of self-appreciation for what we are experiencing. Later on tonight, I'm gonna to go through some of those um, specific experiences of loss and talk about some of the tips and tools for how to address those particular experiences of loss. But right now I wanna talk a little about menopause. Oh joy. For some women, it's a barely noticeable passage, a simple transition from having monthly periods to not having monthly periods. For others, it is a life disrupting, potentially career derailing time of physical discomfort, maybe pain, and emotional and psychological confusion and disorientation. Sounds like fun, right? Well, the conversation about menopause is finally becoming more common here in the US as of this past year, only as of this past year. It is still pretty taboo, especially in the workplace. However, it is an important topic for women in midlife as we are typically, or at or nearing the pinnacle of our careers when the challenging symptoms of perimenopause hit. How unfair. It has been heartening to hear from public figures about their experiences of menopause. I loved it that Michelle Obama recently talked about her experiences of menopause. I've also heard Viola Davis talk about it, Gillian Anderson, Cynthia Nixon, and of course, Gwyneth Paltrow with her goop business. We can find articles in most magazines these days. It even has shown up on the pages of the Harvard Business Review as something that companies need to pay attention to. Finally, there are tons of books being written about it and more female doctors are becoming menopause specialists. It is also liberating to have the topic of menopause come out of the shadows and be acknowledged as simply a normal part of the female, female journey that every single woman will experience at some point in her life, that every woman with a female reproductive system will experience. So as a transgender man, he will go through menopause. And while it is typically a midlife phenomenon, it can occur earlier because of a medical intervention or treatment such as chemotherapy or some surgeries. Some women experience natural menopause as early as their mid thirties. I started going through menopause when I was 38 and my perimenopause lasted 12 years. And I had the wonderful experience of, of going through most of the symptoms that we are, that are typical of, of perimenopause. There are about 40 typical symptoms of perimenopause. And that starts when your hormones begin to shift and that lasts until a year after your final period, which is considered the actual moment of menopause. So perimenopause is that period of time when your hormones first begin to shift and you first begin to feel the stirrings of, of symptoms of, of perimenopause. And it lasts all the way through until that year after your last period. Many of us are not told what to expect at all, which can make experiencing many of these symptoms a cause for confusion and concern. 
Over the years, many of my clients tell me they feel like they're losing their minds or that they feel seriously ill, that they cannot focus or concentrate at work, that their levels of irritability and rage are through the roof, that their depression and anxiety or just general moodiness are making their lives miserable. Some women are raising teenagers with their own raging hormones and volatile moods while they are coping with the physical and emotional changes of perimenopause. That can make for a sometimes chaotic household, huh? Even over Zoom, having a hot flash during a presentation or while leading a team meeting or forgetting where you are in your presentation because of fatigue or lack of focus can look like you are nervous or ill-prepared. It can make you look like you cannot handle the responsibility. And if these kinds of things happen regularly while you cope with the various um, experiences of perimenopause, which can go on for months or years, you can possibly, it can possibly deprive you of a promotion or inclusion in a career advancing project. Or it can make a client you are presenting to feel that you are not up to the task and to lose confidence in you. It can make your team lose confidence in you if you are leading a team. Fatigue from insomnia and night sweats can make you feel incapable of doing your job well. And these are all reasons why it's so important that companies become menopause aware. There are over 30 million midlife women in the workforce. Learning how to manage perimenopause symptoms can be crucial to your success and certainly to your personal comfort and physically and emotionally. There are two important days this month that I wanna make note of. World Mental Health Day, which was on October 10th and World Menopause Day, which will happen on October 18th. Women's mental health during menopause is crucial as so many women experience severe anxiety as well as depression. This can put some women at risk of self-medicating with alcohol or opioids, for example. And for some, risk of suicide. Suicide rates among women mid in midlife have climbed steadily over the past decade. Concerns about this are a bit amplified at the present time because of the stress of the pandemic and the added responsibilities that women have and the social isolation. It is critical that if you find yourself struggling at all with anxiety and or depression, that you give yourself the permission to get the support that you need. Our mental health is really no different from the health of any other part of our body. It is just that it impacts our emotional and cognitive functioning and can impact our interpersonal relationships. There's no shame in having something that impacts our brain any more than there is in having something that impacts our hearts or our liver or our leg. If you feel something is off and you are in emotional pain, please get the support that you need. It's important. All right, back to the stage of liminality. If you can go with the flow, we can move into greater intimacy with our true self and into a deeper, more aware relationship with ourselves. We may also find that we are experiencing some grieving for what we let go of, rejected or lost during that time of separation, including our sense of what our youth was. We may begin to confront our mortality and feel a real hunger for a deeper sense of meaning and purpose in our lives. This is the adult moment in our lives when we tend to ask, am I in the right relationship, the right career? Am I in the right position? Am I in the right organization? Do I wanna leave my job and start something completely different? Like start my own business? Is there something more meaningful that I would like to do, that I would find more fulfilling or do I want to run away all by myself to a distant land far, far away? When I was going through perimenopause, I had this fantasy of, of a love, really lovely cottage by the ocean, of course, with a cat. <laughs> I never did that. 
again, it's during this stage that women may make some big moves in their lives and careers. Sometimes these are great decisions, appropriate and successful. Other times they are reactionary and less successful. Our lives are impacted by a few things. For some women, it is the experience of the hormonal changes of menopause that can cause profound ups and downs. And these ups and downs can give rise to some erratic behavior, as you might imagine. Another factor is that there's a restlessness that occurs during this period of time. That sense of, again, not being sure where you're at and what you're doing and what is it you really want to be doing. Asking yourself, am I living in alignment with my values? We may find ourselves asking that classic question that we've heard so often. Is this all there is? Is this what life is really all about? Some bad decisions we make are to leave a position in a career or to leave a relationship because of that restlessness or hormonal storms that evoke both deep and heightened emotions of depression, anxiety, and sometimes rage. These are times when it's helpful to have a good coach or a therapist who understands these stages and can have, that can have the possible, excuse me, and the possible impact of menopause to help to slow you down, to slow down the process of your decision-making and give some serious thought to what is going on before you make any radical moves. And some great decisions come out of your experience during this time. A realization that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, excuse me, is no longer satisfying. And the desire to move on becomes the source of really right moves for you. This can be the time when we leave a position or we leave a relationship because we are in fact honoring ourselves and our wants and needs. These are the times when one might leave a corporate career and start a business or realize that we actually hate being an attorney or a doctor and start down a completely different path to being an interior designer or a yoga teacher. Others decide to go back to school to become an attorney or a psychologist. These examples are actual experiences of some of my clients. These can be messy times and these can be powerful, exhilarating times. I've had many conversations with women in their early 50s who tell me that they feel the most grounded and most powerful that they have ever felt. Your mindset becomes incredibly important. It is a time to really create a personal mission statement and an action plan to define your best steps to a successful fulfilling and vibrant path forward. The evolution continues through the next stage called integration. This is a time for gaining real clarity about who you are now and becoming comfortable with that emerging identity. This can be a time of extreme creativity, of entertaining lots of new ideas about what you want to do and what you want to contribute to the world. New adventures are explored and embraced. Different path, parts of yourself have been revealed and welcomed or rejected. This is a time when you come back to solid ground. And again, this whole journey can be quite nonlinear. You can find yourself right back in liminality as a result of an unexpected life event that creates, again, that sense of not knowing where you're at and confusion and, and a lot of erratic feelings. You may examine what you want your life to look like at this stage of your life, and you may take concrete steps toward those things that give you a sense of greater purpose and deeper meaning in your life. It is during both of these stages that we are confronting some, again, really big questions and big decisions in our lives. It is a time when we are given the opportunity to grapple with our identity. Loss, which can come in many ways, figures into this, causing a pretty profound confrontation with our own mortality. I remember being in my early 50s and struggling with the feelings that I was running out of time. I mean, I didn't feel like I was gonna die. I just didn't think I was gonna have the time to do all that I wanted to do. One of my older friends poked quite a bit of fun at me during that time. 
telling me that I had plenty of time, that I was young and that I could go about the business of enjoying my life, which I did and do. We tend now to turn outward and to look at what we can contribute to others, how we can contribute to making the world a better place. We may do that on a small scale through individual acts or on a large scale through organizations and maybe movements. And this leads us to individuation, the final stage in the midlife journey. This is one of recognizing the various integrated conflicts that have existed within us and appreciating finally achieved resolution to them. It is here that we come to really accept who we are, limitations and all. It is during this stage in life when a person's true identity emerges because we've pulled it all together and become grounded Carl Jung considers this to be a spiritual maturation of the self. And at this point, you still have much more life to live in different stages of later life to experience. I wanna focus now on a bit of some of the specific transitions experienced on the midlife journey and provide some of those tips and tools for these challenges. Each of these challenges involves a loss of identity and can leave us feeling adrift for a period of time. And again, it's that feeling adrift, that sort of out of sight of land that is so characteristic of that period of liminality when so many of these life transitions occur. Empty nest. This is a natural part of the life cycle for women who have children and it can be a bittersweet experience with mixed feelings of pride relief, sadness, and fear. And this is a time that elicits grief. We are no longer part of our children's daily lives in ways that we have, in ways that we have been, and that there's a loss of companionship on that day-to-day -day intimacy. There's also an increase in concern about our children's safety and well-being. How will they fare out there in the world? What kind of lives will they make for themselves? Will they be okay? We may now be feeling loneliness, tearfulness, as well as other emotions, such as anger and frustration. This is normal. Some women may experience some anxiety and some can experience depression. Be self-aware and get the appropriate support that you need this may include consulting a therapist or a support group or a spiritual counselor. This is also a, a time to reach out and connect with others in your life. Your spouse, your spouse or partner uh, is the person who's going to be there. If this is the person that you have raised your children with, you can both celebrate an opportunity to take a time to vacation together or a staycation given our current reality and celebrate that now you have some uninterrupted time together. You now have also more time for yourself and you may want to enjoy newfound freedom by learning some new skills, taking up a new hobby, and you can enjoy more time with friends, even if it's over Zoom. This is a great time to develop also some new self-care rituals, rituals that you felt you haven't had time for in the past. Most importantly, do not feel that your response is inappropriate or overblown. Empty nest is the real deal. It is a normal response. You are entitled to your feelings and to doing what you need to do to address your feelings and take care of yourself. Loss of a parent. The death of a parent is something that we each have to deal with at some point in our lives. When it happens during our midlife, it is likely something that we are more prepared for than if it were when we were younger. But the loss is still a, is a huge one for most of us. Depending on your relationship with the parent, your feelings will vary. Maybe you were very close. Maybe you were not. You may have been a caretaker. The loss may have come at the end of an illness or it may be sudden. Whatever the circumstances, you are now confronted with a loss 
that will require the processing of emotions. Let yourself have your grief. Let yourself have all of your feelings and get the support that you need. Be that again with a family member or a spouse or a friend or therapist or spiritual counselor. Grief takes us on an unpredictable journey and there was no right amount of time to grieve or a right way to grieve. Loss of a spouse or partner through death. This is a much less predict predictable death to adjust to. Certainly some deaths can come as the result of an illness, maybe even a prolonged one, but it can also be sudden. Again, give yourself the time and space to experience your grief and all of your feelings. You may have many of them. Get whatever support you need to handle any arrangements that need to be made and to handle whatever details that need to be addressed so that you are not doing all of it by yourself or any of it by yourself. But most importantly, get the support you need to deal with your feelings. Seek out a therapist or a group or clergy if that feels appropriate for you. Turn to family and friends and engage in extreme self-care. If you can take some extended time off of work, do that and let the work handle itself. That needs to be someone else's problem for the time being. Let yourself have your feelings which may run the gamut from sadness, sadness to rage. They are all appropriate. Again, let your grief take its course. It will take its own time. Divorce. Regardless of the circumstances and regardless of who initiates the divorce, it is still an experience of loss. It is a loss not only of the actual relationship, but the vision that you had for that relationship. Both losses hurt and both will result in grieving. Be sure that you have the support of appropriate people, be that an attorney or a mediator, certainly a financial advisor, and again, people to support your emotional needs. These days, there are many women who specialize in supporting women who are going through a divorce. Lots of financial advisors, attorneys, therapists, and coaches who specialize in women going through divorce. Allow yourself the opportunity to engage in the services of whoever feels appropriate for you. Loss of your own health in some way. Midlife can bring some unexpected health challenges. And when it is, and when it is life changing, it requires that we face ourselves in a particular way. The loss of our health and well being is a crucial moment in anyone's life. So many women face breast cancer, many face cancers of reproductive organs, untold numbers of women face issues of heart health. Heart attacks impact and kill, in fact, more women than any of the cancers put together. Take your health seriously. Certain health challenges can leave us limited in some ways, and we may need to face certain losses of function or mobility that will change the way we live our lives. And as with all of these challenges, make sure that you get all the support that you need and want. Medical, emotional, psychological, social, it's all important. Loss of a job. The loss of a job can be a real blow to our ego, our self-confidence and sense of well-being. Take whatever time you need to understand why it happened and what your next steps need to be. Get the support that you need to deal with your feelings as you would going through any other loss. If your goal is to get another job, there are some good things to keep in mind in terms of dealing with potential ageism. Celebrate your experience and acquired wisdom and focus on what you have done most recently. Keep your skills fresh and don't be afraid to take a class to upgrade. Stay connected with your network and with your industry. Stay up to date. And lastly, the fear of loss of cognitive function. This is one that nearly every woman encounters during menopause. The decrease in our hormones impact our ability to focus, our memory and our ability to concentrate. 
as we deal with the fatigue that comes with loss of sleep because of insomnia and night sweats, that alone can impact our cognitive abilities. As I mentioned before, clients tell me all the time that they feel like they're losing their minds. Be assured that your cognitive abilities will resume and you will feel like yourself again. You may wish to consider some hormone therapy and to best determine that you may wanna consult a menopause specialist to decide if that's right for you and if so, what kind. You can find a menopause specialist in your area by going to the North American Menopause Society website, going to the find a practitioner section and entering, entering your zip code. As we age, it's important to know that our brains are very plastic. New advances are being made in neuroscience all of the time. And the understanding of brain plasticity has been one of the most exciting areas of this research. Curiosity is your friend in so many ways in midlife, but with regard to our brains, curiosity is really our friend. Learn something, learning something new causes our brain to grow new neural pathways. Learning things that require us to approach that learning in different ways, such as learning a new mathematical skill or technology skill versus learning something physical versus engaging in a visual learning like painting. These all cause the brain to build new neural networks connecting different parts of the brain. I'm a bit of a nerd <laughs> and I love learning about this stuff, but I will just encourage you to be a constant student and learn new things all of the time. Take advantage of this uh, plasticity and grow your brain. And this will definitely help you in terms of regaining your sense of, of cognitive awareness and cognitive ability. The other thing that is important in any of these areas is to get plenty of exercise. Exercise produces endorphins, which improve our mood. Exercise is good for our physical, psychological, and emotional health and well being. It is really important as we age and very helpful when we're going through any of these transitions. You will notice that in each of these situations, I am giving you counsel and permission to take your feelings seriously and to take good care of yourselves in the ways that feel appropriate for you. Each of these moments of transition involves some form of loss and therefore grief. Each of these moments of transition also opens the door to some kind of transformation. No one is just like you and only you will know what you need and what will come next, embrace it. To be in midlife is to encounter the unknown on many levels. It is an invitation to really look at ourselves, our lives and ask, who am I? And what is it that sustains me? What gives my life? a true sense of purpose, a true sense of meaning. What is my most exciting and rewarding? And, 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 and it invites to a deep commitment to ourselves to fully embracing the real truth of who we are. It can be really exciting and really fun. It opens up a lot of doorways. Purpose becomes especially important in bed life as we move beyond the need to care for others in so many ways we look to a larger sense of what we want to contribute in the world. And having a sense of purpose is connected to greater resilience, better emotional, psychological, and physical health and well being. It is exciting to me that there are so many conversations happening about positive aging that are allowing us to feel more seen and have many more options. Women are talking about the grace and wisdom of their journey of getting older. Women in midlife are being seen and celebrated for their leadership. Look, for example, at the seven amazing midlife women who led their countries in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic better than any other leaders. How did they succeed? They did what women do. They listened. They listened to the scientists. They listened to their citizens. They collaborated. They took decisive action that resulted in greater safety 
and lower incidence of infection and deaths in their countries. Every day I hear about another woman who has made it into the C-suite, midlife women who are taking the lead and doing what great leaders do and are paving the way for more leaders to follow in their footsteps. And I'm sure that you, like me, celebrated the women who won the Nobel Prizes this year. And the number of women entrepreneurs keeps rising. There are over 9 million women-owned businesses across the, gen across the nation, generating one and a half trillion in sales and employing nearly 8 million people. 2018 saw a record number of women running for and elected to public office. And I'm hoping to see that trend continue in this election. There's been a snowball effect happening in various social movements, be it Me Too, Time's Up, Black Lives Matter, Positive Aging, LGBTQ rights. A lot is happening in social justice and racial justice that are moving us forward. Of course, we still have plenty of room to grow. We are still dealing with the reality that we live in a sexist and gendered ageist culture. Women of color are still unequally disadvantaged in the workplace and in healthcare. However, the fact that we see more women in visible and influential positions of leadership in any industry and in any field of endeavor, endeavor the more women will pursue them. And by leadership, I mean showing up for yourselves and for each other in any aspect of your life and in any personal endeavor. I wanna to share um, today, I wanna to end with a partial list of things from a great article I read recently titled 20 Outstanding Things About Women in Our Prime by Anne Franks. We have learned to say no and be comfortable with it. We worry much less about what other people think of us this is what we, it is what we think of ourselves that matters. We have learned that perfection is way overrated and impossible, and we are able to see the beauty in our imperfections. We are more likely to speak up, speak up and out in boardrooms and meetings, and we are not afraid to express our opinions, even if it means that we might be seen as, hmm. We are more comfortable with leadership. We enjoy the opportunity to mentor and sponsor other women and realize that supporting other women makes us all stronger. There is always room at the table for more another woman. It is easier to know when to give up and to regroup and when to keep fighting. We are willing to listen and learn to develop our strengths. And we know when it comes to our physical health, it, it's move it or lose it, that developing our core strength, developing our cardio and lifting weights is important. And we are delighted that we no longer have to worry about birth control. We found the freedom to enjoy a healthy physical relationship without the distraction of children in the house. We aren't afraid to try new styles and beauty regimens. And we recognize that women in our prime are a force to be reckoned with. So there's a lot going on in the dynamic years of our 40s, 50s, and 60s, the prime of our lives. Knowing the territory and having some awareness and some knowledge can make them the most wonderful and productive years of our lives. All right, so Denise, I would love to hear some questions from the audience. Oh, hi, Barbara. Thank you so much. Um, hi. So yes, people are very um, grateful that you're talking about this. And um, someone even mentioned that she was very happy that you said, remember that this is all normal. Yes. And you've been working with women for decades, uh, but is this new to talk about transitions and so be so open about it? Uh it is, it is relatively new. I mean, it's not particularly new for me. Um, because it was something that I was interested in really early on. Uh, when I was going through my master's and, and doctoral work, I was very interested in adult development, um, although I didn't really start using it in my work um, until I was old enough to have some street cred. You know, it was difficult to be talking about stages of midlife when I was in my 20s and 30s 
Uh, so it wasn't until I get into my 40s and 50s that I really started talking with women uh, about this midlife journey and these stages of adult development. You mentioned a lot about menopause. Do you have any resources for uh, women for, for that issue? Oh, gosh, there are lots and lots of them. Um, I, would, I would first recommend going to the North American Menopause Society website, and that's menopause.org. Um, it, it will give you um, examples of, or lots of information actually about the various symptoms that women encounter, um, how to take care of yourself. Uh, again, it'll give you access to finding out about who the menopause specialists are in your area. And there are many, many more coming online, many more. Uh, it, it was pitiful actually that so little was addressed about menopause. Um, when I went into perimenopause at 38, I was sort of patted on the head by my GP and told, um, you're too young to be going through menopause. Well, it turns out that I wasn't, um, <laughs> I wish I had known. Um, and, and then go to your, you know, your, uh, your favorite um, Google, what is that called? Uh, search engine, thank you. <laughs> um, and, or go to Amazon just to look for what books are available and put in menopause. Um, and there are a bazillion of them, a bazillion of them, um, some better than others. I've, I've read almost all of them. A new one seems to come out um, every month. Um, so take advantage of that opportunity. And what about the, your own clients? What is the most common reason they come to you? What's the issue that they're dealing with mostly? Most commonly, um, it's because they are in a place in their professional career where they are at an inflection point. Um, they're, they're looking at, do I wanna keep going on in the position that I'm in? Um, many women feel like it's time for the next big step in their career. They're feeling bored or uh, really not well challenged in the situation that they're in or they're curious to explore um, something else altogether. Uh, I remember, actually this was, God, this was probably 20 some odd years ago. Um, a woman was interested in moving into the then new field of cloud computing. Um, and so we looked at how she needed to uh, position herself to be able to do that. So it's, it's really looking at um, what's next um, some women are entertaining leaving the corporate environment altogether and starting uh, maybe their own business or moving into um, some other activity. Um, and and it's, it's really um, a time for women to be bold about what they're interested in and, and allow themselves to explore and to feel okay about the fact that they're bored and they want to do something else. Um, and to, to take a little bit of time to explore what their options are and come up with their best next choice. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that they were wrong before or doing something unsuitable before. Exactly, or they, they've just grown out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, they've just become bored and, and they want a, a new and different challenge or, or mm -hmm. a heightened challenge because they've, they've gotten a lot of skills now. And they want to be able to use those skills in, in a beneficial way. So how, so I have a question about how does someone discover what is next for them? Oh, what a fun journey that is. Um, first of all, it's really looking at um, what are the kinds of things that, that you just find yourself interested in. Um, I often, uh, ask women to go back and, and explore what kinds of things were they interested in when they were younger that maybe they let go of. Um, and there may be some uh, inspiration in, in those interests. Um, ask people around you. Uh, sometimes we don't see ourselves as well as other people see us. And so there's the opportunity to say to our friends or uh, family members, what do you see me being interested in? What do you see me being good at? Um, and, and also uh, curiosity, really looking at what are some things that you haven't explored that you might be interested in exploring. 
Mm-hmm. It's a fun journey. So for people that are going through this and if they'd like to connect with you, how, what's the best way for them to connect? Well, um, they can reach me at Barbara at a time of my uh, And you can go to my web- website, a time of my Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you, Barbara. Our thanks to Dr. Barbara Mark for joining us today. And thank you also to the viewers who tuned in. That concludes our virtual program at the Commonwealth Club. And thank you for watching. Thank you.